the army will follow this coup d'etat. Uh, the chain of command will be shaken up, and that will have a very negative effect on the war front. So the heads of state and members of ECOWAS will be discussing a double crisis, both military and political, at their meeting in Abidjan. Things are clear for the president of Benin. Amadou Toumane Touré remains the president of Mali. We must be able to find a solution in order to make sure that democracy returns, meaning re-establishing the place of the president by any means necessary. Swift action is needed in Abidjan to defend democracy following the coup. The Malian president's chair was empty, but some of the participants were reassured to learn that France established contact with him by telephone. Kofi Annan is trying to stick together a diplomatic solution to the upheaval that is trying to, that is tearing Syria apart. The UN special envoy to the country arrived in Beijing to drum up support for a plan to stem the bloodshed. Well, the government in Damascus says it has agreed to a six-point plan drawn by the international envoy. The Syrian move came after its key allies, Russia and China, agreed to the formula. Meanwhile, a coalition of Syrian opposition groups has concluded a meeting in Turkey. The convergence is aimed to estimate bringing together the anti-Assad groups under a single umbrella. We have details of that story in this report. As Kofi Annan continued with his mission in Beijing for an assessment of China's commitment to his plan for the Syrian crisis, Bashar al-Assad made a dramatic move. He wrote a letter to the United Nations Arab League mediator saying he accepted the six-point plan, agreeing to make a commitment to stop all armed violence, to allow aid to be brought to areas affected by the fighting, and to release arbitrarily detained people. The opposition forces meeting in Istanbul to prepare an international conference on Syria have no illusions about al-Assad's announcement. Used to the Alawite regime's lies, the 400 participants are expected to take a position on a draft declaration by the Syrian National Council calling for the rule of it's a declaration that sets Syria's new identity after the fall of Bashar al-Assad, a Syria that is democratic, pluralist, and civil, and guarantees equality to all Syrian people. Criticized for failing to agree among each other and thus delaying solutions, Syrian opposition forces are first to admit they are new at the game of politics. It's not easy to, to make a very good opposition about after 43 years of tyranny. We have no political life in Syria. We are, we are trying now to do it. They are aware that it's urgent to find a common ground. Our fear is that unless we have a decisive solution to end the killing and the fighting, things can get, go out of hand and more radical elements can uh, would be injected into the scene. We don't want to see that. Kofi Annan, meanwhile, immediately responded to the Syrian president, urging him to put his commitments into effect and create an environment favorable to dialogue. Their respective governments might be the worst of foes, but the people of Iran and Israel are doing their best to reduce the volume of the pro-war sentiment being drummed up in the region. Iranian and Israeli social network users have been busy making friends from the other side, and for all the war rhetoric between the politicians and the military, the message on Facebook has been mainly the promotion of peace. We have more on that in this report. Make love, not war, and other slogans straight out of the 60s and 70s. This time, as this is the 21st century, the channel of communication is the Internet. The exchange of peace messages is between two countries which normally cannot stand each other, namely Israel and Iran. Israel loves Iran. This is the name of the Facebook group that two pacifists created in Israel. They only wanted to voice their anti-war stand, and then it grew. As a, as a country, we fighters, we are ready for any war, just bring it on. Yes, we are ready, but maybe we don't need the war. Maybe, maybe we can just, you know, be as people. Maybe we can just say, uh, having a new message. And maybe this message will get so big that it changed something, that it prevents this war from happening. 
It's not certain if war can be prevented like this, but the response from Iranians has been immediate and extensive. Iran loves Israel was the general sentiment. The Facebook group got tens of thousands of likes. Then it was the Israelis' turn again. Hundreds gathered in Tel Aviv over the weekend to call on their leaders not to attack Iran. So there's a big difference between Israeli public opinion and government rhetoric, according to initiators of the search for peace. An Israeli or an Israeli-American strike against Iran would endanger safety and the security of all the peoples in the region and may cause a regional war. We are against that. We know that the attack against Iran would not solve the security problems of Israel. Few Israelis doubt they face hostility from the Iranian Islamic Republic with its controversial nuclear program. But the Facebook initiative is making a breakthrough, at least among a growing number of anti-war activists in both countries. We'll now take our second break. Weather is next. Let's now take a look at the weather report courtesy of the Central Forecast Office. The Gambia is endowed with a wonderful landscape full of boobab trees. Like its key point in Bacau, it is one of the most exotic sceneries in the world. The boobab tree is a symbol of resilience, wisdom, and resourcefulness. For the boobab tree provides good food in times of hunger, rents its back for medications, and its sap for glue. In the Gambia, there is a company like the Bobab Tree, 100% African and purely Gambian in all aspects, in know-how, design, value, capital, and management. That company is Elton. Elton, employing hundreds of Gambians and proudly associating itself with development in the Gambia. Elton, side by side with the Gambia. Hello and welcome to the weather segment. We begin with a summary of today's weather, followed by the forecast. The Gambia has gone through a warm and stable afternoon. For what will follow, let's begin with a look at the satellite image captured at 16.30 hours, indicating clear skies and stable conditions over most parts of the continent. However, the southeastern part was characterized by convective cloud development, and these will result in rain over the affected places. For the Gambia tonight, conditions will be cool and breezy. Tomorrow will be warm, variably cloudy, and intermittently breezy. Winds will continue to be northwesterly in orientation, but generally light to moderate in speed. Morning temperature values will be 18 degrees Celsius over Banjul, Yindom, Karawan, Sibano, and Junoy. We are expecting 19 degrees Celsius over Kaur, Safo, and Yenyambure. Basia and Fatoto will be 20 degrees Celsius warm tomorrow morning. Top temperatures will be 27 degrees Celsius over Banjul. We are expecting 29 degrees Celsius over Yindum and Kerawan. Sibano Jinoy will record 32 degrees Celsius. Kaur Safo Yenyambure will be 34 degrees Celsius tomorrow. Basia and Fatoto will be 36 degrees Celsius warm. The day tomorrow will be much cooler than it is uh, today. 
for those going to see, low tides will be 0 0.45 meters at 4 minutes to 7 o'clock in the morning, morning and 0 0.54 meters at